Practicing mindfulness and being present is something we hear a lot about, even if we're all trying to do 20 different things at one time. Our stress levels are up, our weight might be up, and we may find ourselves burned out with zero energy, among many other things. It's difficult, no doubt, but there are a few key ways you can practice a healthier mindset and create an improved lifestyle one day at a time. Thank you for joining us on The Confident Patient in a New World. I'm Beth Myers, founder of 2 by 2 Health and co-author of The Confident Patient. Co-hosting with me is my colleague and co-author, Wendy Benson. Today, we're talking with Dr. Naomi Perella, Medical Director at Rush Weight Management and Lifestyle Medicine. Thank you for being with us today, Dr. Perella. Thank Wendy, you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Wendy, this conversation ties so well into the health and wellness talks we recently had with our dietitians. I'm going to let you take it from here. Thank you so much, Beth. And Dr. Perilla, we are just so delighted to have you with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited too. <laughs> um, we, you know, you're a weight management physician, but you place an incredible um, emphasis on wellness, which um, is something that so many of us are talking about these days, um, even pre-pandemic, but especially now. Um, in fact, you're the head of Russia's weight management and lifestyle medicine program. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you describe lifestyle medicine? Yeah, so lifestyle medicine has so many different meanings to different people. And it's kind of like healthy eating, right? So it might mean different things to different people. But to me, lifestyle medicine is really about deliberately choosing behaviors that promote health and that can prevent, improve, or even reverse disease with or without treatments, right? And it's all the ways we do that without medications or surgeries. Um, and so they include things like how you move your body, uh, the food and drinks that you choose to uh, have, your sleep, stress management, recovery, whether you're smoking or not, or using other substances that impair your body, and also how connected you feel to yourself and others. So that's really kind of lifestyle medicine. Hmm. It's fascinating. It's so multifaceted. I mean, it just, there's so many different pieces um, to the puzzle. But it's so interesting because it, it like, a lot of people talk about medicine and how, you know, we use big words and um, people don't understand when they leave the doctor's office, but this is like the basic stuff. Like if we can't get totally. this right, how are we going to get everything else and understand everything? So it's so basic, but so needed. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, the foundation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. What a, what a great way of framing that. Yeah. So, you know, your approach is a little different than some of the other traditional approaches. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. So, so there's a couple of pieces there. So in my clinic, we really take care of people based on understanding their goals and then understanding where they are now and how they got there. So our first question we ask patients is, so what's your goal? And a lot of people look at us like so strangely, right? Because it's a weight management clinic. But we hear things in addition to often hearing to lose weight. Some of the most common answers are to feel better, to look good in my body, to be healthy, to manage, let's say diabetes better or uh, come off of medications and to be able to play with others, right? Whether it's travel, hang out with the grandchildren, you know, do all the things people want to do. So people want to feel better, do better, flourish, and do things in their lives and with others and be productive, really have no limits. And so in our clinic, that's actually where we start from. Rather than from a diagnosis and then saying, oh, let's treat the diagnosis, we go back from what do you want and how are we going to get you there so you can accomplish it? And then we try to create that environment together with the patient that allows their body to go in that direction. And that sort of sets that journey. So it's really like thinking about it as collaborating with patients to achieve their goals and health and the lifestyle stuff, the foundations, just like Beth was saying, are the foundations that help set that path so that you can get to your goal. So important. When I worked as a bariatric, a bariatric nurse, one of the things um, a patient said was, I wanna go to a concert with a friend and I don't fit into the seats. Like it was that like, yes. I mean, like I understood yes. that she wanted to lose weight, but like when she said it to me like that, I was like, yeah, like we can totally help you with that. And we need to get- Totally. To yeah. Totally. 
Yeah. And exactly. I, and I the, love how, I love how individualized it is, you yeah. know, because each for each of us flourishing might mean something different and talking exactly. with individuals about what's important to them in their life. I mean, that's powerful. And even in the stage of their life. Right. We ask that question all the time because what your goal is a physician with a patient that you see maybe three times a year is totally different than the goal of the patient. So like making sure yes. that we're all going to the same place is really important. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the health goals, like to have good health allows you to do other things, right? And if you don't have good health, it actually is limiting. So I think connecting the dots for people helps them understand how oh, if I do this, I can get to that, right? That goal that I have. So for us, that's really the most important part is connecting the dots. It's not just about the number on the scale. Like, right. It's just a number, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so I know in the- Yeah, and there's- also, go, ahead, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say, there's just so many ways to be healthy, right? So, and to achieve our goals. So it helps to have somebody- sort of recognize, you know, like in our clinic, we really want to understand each person's history, each person's medical, you know, their, their physiology. And then we can say, okay, for you, that plan that your best friend is doing, isn't going to work for you. Right. But these are the factors that will matter. And there's five different ways to achieve that. So which one of these is going to fit your life in your style? That's really like the beauty of it is really tailoring it. That's actually what I was just going to ask when we've heard, yeah. when we've had discussions in the past about living your best lifestyle, like what does that mean? And that's kind of what you're describing right now. Yeah. It's really about living the life you want. Um, not the life that I want for you, the life that you want for you. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we ask our patients about that goal. And like I said, many people say essentially the same thing, right? I want to feel better, do better, flourish, be able to do the things that I want to do, be productive, have no limits. That's living your best lifestyle. So that's what we're talking about all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. You know, um, we work with a lot of people who are caring for their loved ones in some way, shape or form. And that um, can be extremely stressful, time consuming. I know when we've talked in the past, you've talked about recharge moments. How can someone who's caring for their loved ones create these recharge moments for themselves? Yeah, so that is such a good question. And right now I hear so much every day about caregiver fatigue, right? I have whether it's healthcare providers or people in their home taking care of their kids or their parents or their spouse or partners, whatever. So recharge moments are so important. So first, it's important to really appreciate what that means. And so I think about a phone, right? My iPhone or you know an Android phone or whatever somebody has, their phone. It can do amazing things really well, right? And so it helps us. And But we have to recharge it or it runs out of charge and then it's no longer helpful. Now it's just an added weight in our bag. So some days it seems like you have to charge your phone more often. And other days it's like you, it was fine all day. Um, so sometimes that phone is working overtime and sometimes it's not. And it's the same for human beings, right? We have this energy and um, when you're in your best metabolic health, you have the most energy. And so it's like your gas tank is the largest. And if you're having some more health issues that are active and not well managed, then it's like you're working with a smaller tank, right? And if you have a lot of stress, it's like you're putting little holes into the tank. So it's sort of draining that energy, right? So you have a certain amount of energy and unless you keep refilling and recharging, it starts draining out and then it doesn't work as well. And then it doesn't feel really good. And then it seems so hard to do anything because your body is trying to get you to conserve energy. So you just want to lay in bed and not do anything. So the recharge is so, so important. And I think part of this is to recognize humans are resilient and strong. We've endured tremendous stresses over generations, right? In really difficult circumstances. So we can do that. And we are a social species. So we can like connect with each other and sort of help each other and 
recharge each other and give each other boosts. And you're, you know, you and Beth have this amazing business where that's what you do. You help people so that they don't have to be draining their energy, right? That you're supporting and helping to refuel. And um, to be able to do that, like we talked about lifestyle medicine, right? The baseline, food and drink, making good choices there, sleep and rest, movement and activity, stress management and relationships. And so what I recommend individuals to do is when they start feeling, even before they start feeling bad, pretty much on a regular basis, do a self-assessment. Maybe it's on a scale of one to five. How are you doing with food and drink? Are you feeling like you're a five out of five, you're nailing it, you're making really good choices and fueling your body and nourishing it? How about sleep and rest? You know, is that actually sufficient for you? Are you getting enough? Does it feel effective? Are you feeling well rested? How about movement and activity? That's one of the first to go, right? We say, I can't hit the gym, I'm too busy, or I have to take care of people, or I need childcare, or whatever. And then the alternative doesn't have to be not moving. But sometimes it becomes not moving, right? Especially when everybody was work from home and school from home. Stress management. How are you doing on that? Is that a five out of five? You're nailing it. You've got a lot of stress, but you got a lot of supports and you're managing the stress well, or is it starting to wear you down? And then again, with relationships, to sort of really check in and see where you are. And when you find, let's say, movement and activity might be the lowest score, that might be a place that either you connect with somebody else or you find a way that you can integrate that. It might just be go upstairs when you have to go to the bathroom instead of using the bathroom on the same floor. Or it might be, you know, when you get up from a chair, sit down again and get up again. That's a squat, right? Like ways to sort of add in and tap in a little bit into the areas that are maybe neglected, not intentionally but because it's often easier to take care of someone else than ourselves. Absolutely. I mean, I got chills just listening to you talk about this. Yesterday I was at the pharmacy <laughs> and this poor lady is taking care of her husband who's on hospice. And she's like, I only get three hours of sleep at night. And I was like, well, how can you take care of him and yourself? No wonder why you're miserable right now. You have to recharge, you have to recover. Um, yeah. It's so important because if you don't, it's like the air mask. I always say this, you know, on the airplane, yeah. like, you would have to put your air mask on first before you put it on your child, which sounds horrible, but otherwise it's, you know, you're not going to be there for your child. So it's just, um, you're so right on so many levels there. Well, I think, you know, like you said about your um, person who's getting limited sleep because of the interruptions, um, take, being a caregiver, it's so, so common. And there's many ways that we've learned to help with that. And one of the things we know about sleep sort of sleep deprivation experiences, um, is if you're worrying about it, it's actually more harmful than just not getting the sleep, right? So that's number one. And number two is also to be reassured that when you are able to get some sleep, your body and your mind, if you are allowing yourself to sleep, in other words, creating space for it, whether or not you fall asleep, whether or not you get the eight hours that every you know journal says you should be doing. We've seen that there's cultures where people don't have that kind of sleep and regularity and perfect sleep cycle, and they do great and they live a really long time. And so part of it is how it's our attitude towards it and how we're sort of punishing ourselves for the fact that, oh, I'm not doing what I should be doing. So I think, you know, the, the mind is pretty amazing. And if you only get a short amount of sleep, your brain is going to have different wave patterns and patterns of sleep than if you get longer hours of sleep. And we know this and over time it adjusts so that you can survive and thrive because the human body is always gravitating towards healing and thriving. So if we get out of our way and we just say, okay, this is the way it is right now. I'm embracing it. I'm stepping into it. And I'm going to learn how to sleep as best as I can right now with the circumstances I have. That's actually health promoting, even if it's the three hours. Amazing. I, I, yeah, love, so powerful. I love what you're sharing. <laughs> <laughs> I do. More <laughs> often. We need, we need more time to talk about these things. I mean, it's just so important. And what you're sharing um, can make an impact no matter what stage of life any of us are currently in. Yeah. 
So obviously you're a tremendous resource to your patients. Um, when people are looking for more of the types of support that you're providing, like, are there websites or there podcasts or there things um, that you recommend when people are leaving their appointment with you and they say, you know, what other resources can I read? Can I listen to? What do you recommend for those that are looking for more? Of what oh, you're that's, sharing? Such, that's such a good question. You know, so there's books, there's support groups, there's therapy, coaching, um, your company, right? Your book, there's, it's really about connecting. And so depending on what the person has come in with and what they're leaving the office with, I'll have different recommendations, but some really powerful ones that I think, um, I'm a book person. Okay. So, um, that's why I got your book on the first, you know, day that it was like released. So, but, um, part of what I think is helpful is having several different kinds of resources. So everyone's got the Headspace, Calm, or Breathe apps, right? Like the relaxation, the stress reduction, this, um, and then there's fitness apps and there's food, you know, awareness apps. And, but I really like some, there's some books that have some really good, useful, actionable concepts. And one was given to me when I was a resident, um, and it's called Riding the Dragon. And it's the 10 lessons for inner strength in challenging times. And it's by Robert Wicks. And that's a book that can be really helpful, especially right now when you're a caregiver. So it was given to me as, you know, being a doctor is really hard and you've just come off this hospice palliative care service. And this is a book for you to review and, you know, look at periodically throughout your career. Another one that is really helpful for individuals who have anxiety or difficulty with, um, so this was really helpful for my patients, for example, and their families who were experiencing um, health scares and maybe anticipating chemotherapy or other kinds of treatments that they were really scared or didn't like. Um, and that is Little Ways to Keep Calm and Carry On. And that's by Mark Reinecke. And I think he's out of Northwestern. Anyways, and then there's Joy No Matter What by Carolyn Hobbs is another great book that helps you understand the negative emotions in our lives or the emotions that we don't really like so much um, and how to bring joy, even despite all of that. And then The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, which is this tribal, uh, he comes from a Mexican tribe, a rural tribe that um, had this wisdom that was passed on generations to generations. Um, basically, uh, really very simple uh, ways to just look at life so that you can continue to have joy and continue to move forward despite everything. <laughs> hmm. well, it sounds like I have some reading to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't wait to get these. <laughs> And being a, um, a working mom, you know, one of the times that I read books or I listen to them in the car yes. and it really speeds up the drive of totally. rush hour traffic. But um, so, and those are perfect books to listen to. I feel good when I get out of the car. Um, I feel like I've learned something. I did two things with, you know, yeah. two, two birds with one stone, which I'm always trying to do. Exactly. I'm exactly the same way. Commute, great time for audiobooks. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's great. So uh, Dr. Perla, what inspires you as a medical professional, as a mother with all the different hats that you're wearing? What, what's inspirational to you? You know, my goal, um, so when I was uh, nine years old, I was in a car accident. They didn't know if I was gonna live. And, um, and I didn't care about medicine before that. I didn't care about the medical profession or anything. And at that moment, um, I became hyper aware of the medical profession. And I lived in Japan at the time. And um, they, at that time, they did not, and I don't know how it is now, but they did not care about what they said in front of a nine-year-old child. Um, and I did not look like everybody else in the hospital. And um, so there were some pretty nasty comments <laughs> that were made about my behaviors, um, which apparently were not appropriate, um, you know, and I remember thinking, you know, after that time, really thought about my job in life is to, um, when people are at their absolute worst, is to help them get better. They don't have to be at their absolute worst. And the outside world doesn't have to 
um, harm other people. We can uh, promote health and joy and love and recovery. And it's really been my purpose to do that is to really uh, focus on contributing to improving the lives of others. And what I do now, I get to do that every day. So I'm inspired when a patient comes in, they show me a picture of you know, something really special to them in their life. It might be a new grandchild. It might be their, you know, child graduating from college or high school or whatever. It might be um, a family vacation or the reunion. And those things, that's what inspires me. I'm like, oh, you're living your life. You're having, you're living your best life. And I get to share that journey with you. And so when somebody shares that, that's my recharge. I'm, I'm good. I'm really loving it. That's so special. Oh, Dr. Perella, I could sit here and talk to you all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you two are so wonderful and your inspiration for everyone else and also for all of us providers to know that you're out there. It's really, really helpful for all of us and not just your patients, but all of us. Well, thank you. Thank you. This has been such an interesting conversation with several takeaways. I have a lot of books to read. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I, you, I heard you talk last year about meditation and I, and I meditate maybe three or four times a week right before I go to bed and it really helps me sleep. So um, something I learned, another thing I learned from you. So thank you. Great. Um, if you'd like to learn more about lifestyle medicine or maybe even weight management information, you can find Dr. Perella at Naomi underscore Perella at rush.edu. In the meantime, Wendy and I will continue our conversation with medical experts and healthcare professionals as we help the competent patient in a new world. Thank you so much for joining us, Naomi. We loved talking with you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And from all of us at 2 by 2 Health, we wish you great confidence and health.